Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and assalamu alaikum. Five years ago, I was working on a research paper in which I was examining the Saudi legal discourse of citizenship. And I was faced with a monolithic paradigm in which Sa younger Saudis were portrayed as immature, passive, complacent individuals or members of their society. And what troubled me the most about this about these stereotypes, although that they were not true, they were commonly believed even among Saudis themselves. What, what troubled me more is that citizenship was understood in a hegemonic context and exercised as an exclusionary force in which, it, rather than an instrument of change and inclusion. So imagine, imagine if we can introduce a paradigm shift in which we can not only highlight the economic aspects of citizenship, which are already discussed in the context of Saudi Arabia, but also focus on the social and political dimensions. So how can we introduce a paradigm shift in which, in which we can dispel all these negative stereotypes? And this is why I'm working on SAHEM, which is an initiative to establish the Society of Activists for Human Empowerment. Now you're probably wondering, why would a chemical engineering PhD student be interested in civil society or civic activism in Saudi Arabia? So in the next few minutes, I'll be talking more on how these four different words, society, activism, empowerment, and human, have influenced me on a personal level and how I would like to reflect that on, through this initiative. Starting with society, I was born in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia and grew up in the city of Qatif. And I was fortunate that my upbringing involved a lot of culture and knowledge, and the intimate nature of the city allowed for a greater sense of belonging and community. And through the different welfare activities and charity-driven ones, I acquired a commitment to give and volunteer. So in essence, my background allowed me to be conscious of those who live on the margins of mainstream society. However, I've always felt that I was engaging in a dialogue of words rather than a dialogue of actions. So this is why when I moved to the United States, uh, I spent a substantial time of, of my college life working in different uh, social organizations and student-run groups. And of the many experiences I was involved in, I would like to share with you a few that act as a great source of inspiration. So being interested in volunteering, I worked with a couple of alternative spring break programs in cities such as Atlanta and New York City. And through these programs, which involved intensive outreach activities that targeted underprivileged groups. I slept and served in homeless uh, shelters. I worked with food supplier organizations and clean public parks, which homeless people consider home. And more than just volunteering, these programs were a major transition in my attitude towards promoting change. I, I felt that I was part, being part of the solution by just playing an active role in combating these complex problems that infuse social, political, economic dimensions such as homelessness by taking small steps and simple initiatives. I've also worked with the Office of Multicultural Affairs at Rice University where I was studying. And, and through this second experience, I acquired a better conception of what diversity means and its implications in society. I, in this context, I understood diversity rather than a burden as a great asset, as a natural part of our human presence. This, was, this experience was a, whole, a lifetime experience in which I was able to go beyond my fears and cross those cultural, emotional, and social borders and experience a new way of thinking in which I was putting myself in other people's shoes and this time engaging in a dialogue of not only words, but a dialogue of actions. And as part of my final year at Rice, I was involved in, I had the chance to meet and speak with the Secretary of Homeland Security uh, during a forum on, that discussed perspectives of young leaders in a post 9-11 era. 
And through these discussions, which focused on civil rights and civil liberties, I gained a better ownership of my, of my own rights, and I learned that it is my responsibility to actually defend these rights. And I learned that granting rights and assigning responsibilities plays an important role in empowering individuals, especially if that involved a transparent dialogue between society and the government. So eager to continue on um, my interest in civil society and not to lose momentum of ac civic activism, I, after graduation, went back to Saudi Arabia and worked uh, and tried to engage in a hunt and explore all the non-governmental organizations and initiatives that exist in my part of the country. And I found out two main observations. The first observation was that all these non-governmental initiatives were uh, limited to philanthropy or career-related work. And even the ones who were touching the area of civil rights, they were limited to dis intellectual discussions that failed to materialize or translate into action. The second observation was there was a lack of participation among the younger generation. And even though initiatives that were engaging younger people, they were limited to um, social and educated elite, and they were not catering to the average Saudi Arabian citizen. So on the one hand, I couldn't see any empowerment in, the, in these initiatives, and on the other hand, I wanted, uh, I observed actually a lot of frustration and disappointment among the younger generation. And being com be acknowledging this gap in the civil society sector in Saudi Arabia, I felt compelled to actually start working on this initiative of Saham. Saham actually is a word in Arabic that means contribute. And this initiative aims at empowering younger individuals to be active and committed members of their society by exercising their citizenship, knowing their rights and responsibilities in an effort to create a generation of active citizens concerned with promoting social justice and strengthening the rule of law in an effort to set a cornerstone uh, in the development of a stronger and more vibrant civil society sector in Saudi Arabia. And at the core values of this initiatives are human rights and the respect of human dignity and the equality of all people under the rule of law through the umbrella of diversity, pluralism, and tolerance. And as a first pro project for this initiative, I'm planning to work on combating hate speech by renouncing it on a social level first and moving on to campaigning to push the government to institute laws that would, and regulations that would criminalize hate speech. And also combat discrimination by deconstructing the false stereotypes and social groupings that exist within the social hierarchy of, within the society in Saudi Arabia. And forming these kind of act uh, activists uh, or network of activists who would um, form committees on a local level and work on grassroots uh, level in which you, they would be able to kind of understand the nuance, exclusion, social exclusionary forces that exist, whether they're being differences in gender, differences in tribal affiliation, differences in socioeconomic background, or differences in, in nationality even. And so Sahem is a, will start as a network of activists. And af after working on a grassroots level, hopefully in a number of years, it will develop into an NGO. And this initiative right now is at its infancy and can only realize that long-term goal by the help of active and caring individuals who believe in activism as an instrument for change. So this is why I would invite you all to visit the website and actually um, join the initiative or if you have any suggestions or questions, uh, you, can you can address them through email because I, this initiative cannot be a reality without your help. I'd like to conclude by emphasizing that the world is changing and that the Arab world is un undergoing revolutionary upheaval and that the methods and approaches that we used, that used to be considered effective in the past, do not address the imminent challenges of today, let alone tomorrow. I think that civic activism 
does help address those challenges, and I believe that Sahem, my initiative, is only part of that. Thank you.